G'day, my name is Will Shackle. Today I'm thrilled to be joined by Dick Smith. Dick Smith is an Australian icon. He's one of Australia's leading adventurers, entrepreneurs and philanthropists. The founder of Dick Smith Electronics, Australian Geographic and Dick Smith Foods and in 1986 was awarded Australian of the Year. Recently, he also became a patron of Nuclear for Australia. Dick Smith, thank you so much for your time today. So since we're discussing nuclear power, I want to actually run through a couple of rapid fire questions and I'm going to ask you to give me a single word yes or no answer to these. First of all, are you a climate denier? No. Do you hate renewables? No. Are you a far right conservative? No. Do you want to delay the energy transition? No. Are you paid for by the fossil fuel industry? No. But you support nuclear power? Yes. Why are you interested in nuclear power? Look, I've done a lot in, in relation to renewables. I went in the first solar vehicle race from Darwin to Adelaide, and uh, I've got a car which is completely powered by renewables, mm. and I've always thought renewables are fantastic, but common sense alone told me that you can't run a whole country entirely on renewables. If it was so, I'd support it, mm. but I'm absolutely positive it's not so. It's never been done anywhere in the world, and uh, to be able to do that running industry and running transport, hospitals and everything continuously on the wind and the sun, wonderful it was possible, but it's not possible. Mm. So you made a, a film for the ABC called 10 Bucks a Litre where you were investigating Australia's energy options and this was some time ago where I guess we had more of an opportunity to act. In it you mentioned nuclear power. Could you talk a bit about that documentary? Yes, I did a documentary and for the ABC uh, one of the problems was that the producer who was working with me, Simon Nasht, is from the left. He's a good friend of mine but he's totally against nuclear power. So here I was fronting a documentary that he was being the producer of, but I had to get nuclear in because I thought it was important. Mm. And I visited the nuclear power station in uh, Dungeness in uh, the UK, which I'd visited as a young backpacker. And then at the very end of the ABC show, I said, if we want to keep our present way of living, nuclear is the only way to go. And what was the response to that film? Did people uh, listen to your call for nuclear power at the time? Yeah, mainly got support. Most mm. people I talk to uh, basically give me support. I'm very lucky. I've got some right-wing friends and I've got some lefty friends. And pretty well, the lefty friends are against nuclear and the right-wing are totally for it. Mm. And it's quite sad because with my lefty friends, it's not really a rational conversation. It's almost as if it's a religion, and that's very sad. Mm. Why do you think that Australia needs nuclear power? Obviously, people will say that we've got vast uh, opportunities in solar and wind. It's obviously very sunny and very windy a lot of the time. Why couldn't we just rely on those solutions? Yes, the problem is the intermittence, the fact that it's intermittent. We, we do have 5,000 times more energy coming from, coming from the sun every day than we need. So you'd think we could just use solar and wind, mm. but it's so intermittent. And the batteries, first of all, pump storage to inundate 20 valleys between Melbourne and Cairns would just not be on to do pump storage. So you need to go to battery storage, but battery storage is unbelievably expensive if you're looking at grid levels. For example, the battery which costs $90 million near Adelaide mm. will run if it could do this, it has the capacity to run Adelaide for about seven minutes. So even AEMO, which is sort of pretty neutral, they don't say much about whether they're supporting uh, nu uh, nuclear or gas, mm. they never mention the battery storage problem. And if they do, I'm, I've tried to find out how many hours of storage have you allowed and I've never been able to get an answer. And you have batteries here at your home, don't you? So what's your experience with those? Do you think that Australians should consider having batteries in their home? And do you still think that even despite yourself using them, that you would also benefit from nuclear power? Yeah, look, here's the problem. I have a Nissan Leaf and when it was mm. delivered, it said zero carbon. And I said to the salesman, well, no, it's going to be plugged into a coal power station. He looked at me shocked and he said, no one's ever said that to me before. So I decided to get solar cells and a separate battery bank, 24 kilowatt hours it is, in the garage. So my Nissan Leaf is plugged into the sun. The interesting thing is, after 10 years of owning the Leaf, 
the battery had to be replaced, which cost $10,000, and now the battery in the garage is flat, so that's going to cost another $10,000. So when I added it all together, mm. my Nis and my Nissan Leaf cost more money in the first place, I added it all together, driving the Leaf per kilometre is about twice as much as a petrol Leaf. So if you want to go truly renewable for a car, you have to be wealthy. Mm. Um, obviously, there, you've said a lot in terms of renewables and you've said that you support renewables, but at the same time, you've acknowledged that there are you know, considerable levels of community backlash against renewable projects and also you, that you've got some environmental concerns about solar panels and wind turbines. How do you think that nuclear could be a better solution well, I think, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm pro-renewables, certainly mm. renewables on your roof. I think that's a fantastic thing to do. I don't mind solar farms if they're out. I've seen one near Broken Hill, which is on marginal land that you couldn't really use for anything else. I support that. But I'm not keen on putting solar cells over good farmland because yep. we're going to need every bit of farmland. And I can understand people who live near these great big wind generators thinking that we've industrialised their beautiful natural landscape. So I feel sympathy for people who are going to have the wind generators there. And I thought, wow, you can have two or three hundred wind generators completely wrecking the environment, or you could, where we have a coal power station at the moment, have one powered by uranium, mm. and you wouldn't need to despoil the landscape. And the other thing is, whereas the wind generators go about a third the time delivering power, the nuclear power station would be 99% of the time. Yep. Um, well, I think it's probably true to say that Australia is you know, renowned for our pioneering attitude, yet our leaders consistently undermine our groundbreaking nuclear science capability. Last year, we both visited Lucas Heights together to see the research reactor there, which produces nuclear medicines and a whole other uh, range of materials, which are really important not only for our country, but also for around the world. Uh, do, do, can you discuss that day uh, with everyone here and also uh, whether you agree when people say that Australia doesn't have a nuclear capability and that we'd be starting from scratch when it comes to nuclear power. Yeah, well, the, the wonderful thing is we have a nuclear reactor in Australia and I think two out of three Australians have benefited from nuclear medicine in some way. The interesting thing is you'd think they'd build the reactor way out in northern South Australia in the desert, but they built it in the biggest city in Australia. And uh, I spoke to the locals there. I said, are the house prices lower here near the reactor? And they said, no, Dick, they're just as high as anywhere else in Sydney. So obviously they consider it to be completely safe. And remember, it's where they store the waste from the reactor. It's mm. sent to France, I understand, for reprocessing. It then comes back to Wollongong by ship and they have a police escort as they drive it up and put it in a shed at, at uh, Lucas Heights. So to me, all that skill and expertise we have, our government's now decided to go to nuclear submarines, so we, no we have to have our own nuclear industry, so it's obvious to go to nuclear power stations. Mm. Does it surprise you then that nuclear power is still illegal in Australia? Yes, it does surprise me. I feel embarrassed because I'm 80 years of age and I've voted in lots of governments and I just can't believe we could be that stupid. Uh, uh, interesting, in 1988 on Australia Day, I think it was the year I was handing, I finished my Australian of the Year, and I was invited by the Prime Minister Bob Hawke and Hazel to go to Kirribilli House for Australia Day, all the boats, and it was absolutely fantastic. And Bob Hawke said to me, oh, well, Dick, you'll be against nuclear. And I said, no because I was helping Bob Brown in the, in the blockade and I was known as an environmentalist. Yes. I said, no, Bob, I'm not. And he said to me then, look, we need to move to nuclear. And it's so wow. obvious. And so here it is, the Labor Prime Minister, one of the most famous and best Labor Prime Ministers, was telling me you should be supporting nuclear. Wow. So obviously, as I mentioned before, a majority of Australians support nuclear power according to the polls. But what would you say to the Australians who are sceptical about nuclear power? Look, what I'd say to those who are sceptical, that it's incredibly important for the future generations and for your generation, Will, that we do something about climate change. Now, no country has ever run completely on renewables. It would be an incredible risk to say that's what we're going to do. The only way we could do it is to have the most incredible amount of storage and I don't think that's affordable. Mm. So whilst I don't think nuclear is going to be cheaper than coal, in fact, my belief is the coal we've burnt, nothing will ever be as cheap as that. And I benefited from that, of course. But I've, I have this 
absolute, with all the research I've done, we have to move to nuclear, not only Australia, but the whole world. It's the silver bullet and we have to do it quickly. Mm. What would you say to your, you know, your peers in the environmental movement? And obviously there's a concern in the environmental movement that nuclear power is unsafe. They often will bring up you know, Chernobyl and they'll also bring up the fact that nuclear power produces waste. How do you usually respond to them and what appeal do you make to them yeah. that nuclear power is safe and something that mm. Australia could use? It's a complete nightmare. All of my green friends are against nuclear and the greens should be the ones who should be supporting it. So what a nightmare. Now I say to them, well, what's the evidence? Why are you against it? And they don't have a lot of evidence mm. against it. They talk about waste and I should mention, I have the way of solving the waste. Not many non-nuclear people have been into the Olympic Dam mine in Northern South Australia. Now it's one of the safest places in Australia, it's in the Woomera military restricted area. Mm -hmm. And you drive down into the adit, into the mine, and there are huge great caverns where they've taken the uranium ore out. And we can store our waste there perfectly safely. So when people say to me there's a problem with the waste, there certainly isn't. And for example, France, with 70% nuclear power for mm. their electricity grid, store all their waste at the power stations in France. Now, do you get warnings not to go to France? Of course you don't, it's a very safe place. And I think the great thing about nuclear waste these days as well is it can be reprocessed. Obviously, Finland have got the, repros the uh, deep underground repository solution as well. So I think that's an excellent point in regards to nuclear waste. I guess what will always come up is, and this is probably what we're currently seeing in the debate, is it's become all about how long it would take and the economics. So as a businessman, do you think that nuclear power could stack up for Australia? Yeah, absolutely. It mm. will take a while. If we made a decision today, I think it would be... Um, in fact, if, if you had to do something really urgently, like there was a mm. war on or something, it's amazing how you can do things so quickly. Yeah. And I think, I have a feeling we're going to get some blackouts and I feel then people are going to say we need to do something urgently. In the United Arab, Arab Emirates, you visited the, mm. the power station there, nuclear power station, from turning the first sod to actually getting power was only about seven years. So I think we could do something in 10 years, but even if it took 20, it would be worthwhile. Because I'm talking to you, you you're going to live for at least another 60 years. Hopefully. So if it took 20 years to get nuclear, it would be worth it if it's going to f stop the terrible things we're told that could happen from global warming. Yep. And I think the great thing about nuclear is that, you know, the power plants last so long. So you can build one and then it will last, uh, for, you know, even up to a century. So it's a long term investment, which I think my generation certainly does need and could benefit from. I, I, I want to now turn to the current federal government. And obviously there's a great hostility that they currently have towards nuclear power. And unfortunately, that also includes our Prime Minister. Uh, Dick Smith, what would you say to the Prime Minister about his opposition to nuclear power? Well, I'd say to the Prime Minister, uh, Anthony, because I know him, I mm. consider him a friend, and I'd say, look, th it's a wrong decision for our young people. So it's OK for him and people of my age because we won't be around when the problems occur. And I'd say to the Prime Minister, please look into it in an objective way because I believe it's the only answer for the future and we need to do something as quickly as possible. Now, re recently you've got yourself in a bit of hot water uh, because you did an interview on 2GB with Ben Fordham and you said that no nation could decarbonise its energy with renewables alone. Uh, the ABC then fact-checked you on this claim and said that four countries, uh, and I've got them in front of me, Albania, Bhutan, <laughs> Nepal, and Paraguay uh, used a combination of 100% hydro, solar and wind uh, to power their electricity. So, Dick Smith, were you caught out lying about renewables? <laughs> no, and in fact, of course, as we most people know now, the ABC had to apologise because mm. uh, they were incorrect. I am correct, no country has ever run completely off renewables. That would be incredibly difficult to do. In, in fact, I believe it's impossible to do, it's not affordable. The amount of storage you need, because one of the problems with renewables, which I support, is they're so intermittent. And what say you design a system that allows for six or seven days of battery storage, because we could have six or seven days without wind and cloud cover. And imagine if you designed that system, it would be unbelievably expensive because of the storage. But then what happened if you had fluke weather? 
and you didn't have wind for eight days. What, the whole country would close down? It's impossible to imagine. Mm. So I believe you have to have some base load power and the safest way of doing it, is, of course, is nuclear. And I, I think the other thing that was startling about the ABC fact check was that first line in the article which implied that you were anti-renewable, which is something that you've obviously clarified to me. You've, yep. You use renewables uh, to generate your own electricity. So I think it was also very good to see you call that out because yes. I think it's a real shame that people pigeonhole nuclear yeah. advocates. I'll tell you what they did, and people do this, they think if you're pro-nuclear, you must be against renewables. Mm. But there's plenty of us who say no, both. We need both in the mix without any doubt. And that's what I support. Agreed. Uh, what do you think that we need to do as advocates for nuclear power and I guess clean energy more broadly in order to legalise nuclear power? Well, campaign as you are now, mm. I think. It's interesting how the country people who are going to be have all these huge wind turbines, their, their landscape's going to be industrialised, they're now objecting. And it's rather sad in a way that why do they need such huge wind farms? It's because of the city people, mm. because that's where the energy is used. And uh, I think the country people are going to really object to destroying their environment. And so that's going to be a powerful... Politicians look at getting in with votes. Interestingly enough, they're going to put wind farms off Newcastle and off Wollongong, mm. but they're not planning to put a wind farm off Sydney. Now, I believe that's for political reasons. The politicians know that's where the big donors come from and where the influential, wealthy billionaires live, so they're not going to put wind farms there, which is unfair and ridiculous. Mm. And finally, what would you want to say to Australians who support nuclear power and want to know how to help? Well, I, I'd say to Australians who support nuclear power to join Nuclear for Australia and to uh, tick the box and as, as a supporter and also probably give a donation. That'd be great too. Thank you so much for speaking with me today, Dick Smith. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Will. If you enjoyed that discussion, please consider supporting our work by signing our petition and donating at nuclearforaustralia.com.